So let's get going. You ready? Absolutely. Okay. Welcome to the worst of the best podcast. You wanted the best. Well, they didn't freaking make it. So here's what you get from Canada and Florida. Ryan and Drew. Welcome, everyone, to the Worst of the Best podcast. I am your host. You probably noticed with the intro, it sounded a little bit different because with me, I have a guest host, and that is Drew. He has been on already. I guess this is your fourth time or fifth time on the show. Am I right? I think you got it right. I think it's five times. Uh, wow. To join the Five Timers Club. <laughs> well, you're the only member of it other than myself and my brother. And speaking of which, I just want to give a little bit of an update regarding my brother. For those who listen to this podcast, who don't listen to the other podcast that my brother and I do, the Rocky Series podcast, I wonder how many listeners of this podcast don't listen to the other one. Probably not a lot. But if you don't know, my brother's taking a bit of a hiatus from podcasting. Everything is fine. He's in good health. It's just his life with his family and his job and his business and everything that's going on with his life. He just unfortunately said he had to step down from hosting duties. Like I've said on the other podcast, he has, of course, a open-ended invitation. He can trump anyone at any time to come back on the show whenever he's available. So I told him, Ruben, whenever you're not busy and your life's not crazy, you just let me know and get him on. So you'll hear his voice again in future episodes. But just throughout this Worst of the Best podcast, we're going to have a rotating guest host, kind of like, I don't know what other show does that, TV show or otherwise. I'm trying to think. There aren't any. This is the first time anyone's attempted this. This is the first time. I'm setting new precedents. Am I in podcasting history? (laughs) Don't sell yourself short. Okay. Well, that being said, Drew, you are part of that Five Timers Club and I got my good friends, Doug and Craig. They're going to come on as well, and they've already picked up some of their topics. Some future topics are going to be Iron Maiden and Kurt Russell. But today, today, we are getting not getting political, so I don't want our listeners to, to turn off the podcast just yet. But we are talking about Hillary Clinton, and we're going to talk about the top 10 conspiracy theories about Hillary Clinton. Did you even know there was that many conspiracy theories about her? Oh, I live in America. Absolutely. I knew. I was well aware. As I looked at some of these, I thought these are maybe like the top 10 most publicized or most talked about. There's definitely been some crazier ones, I think, just sort of off the top of my head. Then there's just sort of this general Democratic establishment conspiracy theories that you have out there. So these all seem more personal to her. That's what we're going to address. Hillary Clinton, the conspiracy theory magnet. You are uh, an American citizen and a U.S. citizen, and I'm Canadian. I'm not a political pundit. I can't speak intelligently on really on anything in general, let alone politics. But I do kind of follow politics in the States. It's fun to watch, and I uh, definitely watched the Hillary versus Trump campaign. That was a lot of fun to watch. And some of these things that we're going to go through today will draw from that. So let's just get right into it. So why don't you start with number 10 there, Drew? Number 10, I think, goes back to a lot of people's introduction to Hillary Clinton as an individual person. I know that, you know, she sort of was the first lady. When she started to have her own conspiracy theories, I thought, was around the time of the Bill Clinton impeachment scandal. The number 10 on our list, as far as Hillary Clinton conspiracy theories, is one that was propounded by the White House employee who secretly taped Monica Lewinsky. That was a woman named Linda Tripp. Mm -hmm. Linda was apparently known to claim that the entire Monica Lewinsky scandal and the affair itself and making it as public as it was, was Hillary's idea. People that sort of believe in this conspiracy theory apparently believe that the logic behind this would be that it would humanize Hillary and that after Bill had served his two terms, then she could continue on that political legacy because of the sympathy she garnered from being the woman who uh, Bill cheated on. I love it. (laughs) I'm sure Bill was, if this is true, Bill was happy (laughs) to oblige in this scandal. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. I want you to do me a favor. (laughs) You know that he smokes cigars, right? Well, that seems to be part and parcel to this entire thing, isn't it? Smoke cigars. 
has cigars. I know that he has cigars. We do keep this show uh, <laughs> PG, sometimes PG-13. I don't want to uh, necessarily reiterate some of the stuff that Bill did in the Oval Office. <laughs> Just Google Bill Clinton cigars and Bill Clinton on the phone with other world leaders, along with Monica there as well. Those are the shortcuts. Yeah. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. It all depends on what your definition of is, is. His idea of sexual relations is a little bit different than mine, and I think that my wife would also feel the same way. (laughs) You know, within a relationship, you define your own parameters. That's what that number 10 is all about. So let's go to number nine. This, this one I hadn't heard about. This was Chelsea's father might be called into question that it might not actually be Bill. And I think that goes without saying that, yes, Bill, he's always been kind of known as the womanizer. I don't think that's really uh, up for debate. And while there may be more than a few rumors swirling around about Bill, he's not the only member of the marriage who is allegedly to have strayed from their vows. According to the likes of Donald Trump, and Roger Stone, of course. Hillary was less than faithful as well. Stone even goes so far as to name two of the men Hillary's alleged to have slept with. That's Vince Foster and Webb Hubble. Vince Foster is probably the more famous name, but it's Webb Hubble who is really at the heart of this conspiracy theory as he is purported to be Chelsea's real father. In front of me here, I actually have a picture of Hubble and Chelsea Clinton, and I will say I can see why this theory has made its rounds a little bit. I think she looks more like him than Bill. Just by looking at the two pictures that are provided, she definitely looks like Hillary, of course. Do you see Bill in her? No, but I'll be absolutely honest with you. I'm not a gigantic proponent or adherent to this whole familial similarities thing. Sometimes it happens and you point to it and you go, okay, that Mm -hmm. makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't and you just sort of never talk about it. In this instance, this is sort of an interesting picture of him, of Hubble, you know, he's sort of in the middle of saying something, so his mouth is wide open. So sure. it, it, they they picked the right picture to sort of put side by side with Chelsea. I honestly feel like growing up sort of in a similar time with Chelsea as she grew up, the way that she looks has changed throughout time. But maybe at this point in time that this picture was taken, she looked the most like Hubble. She's definitely gone through phases as any person will as they're growing up. I don't think she looks so much like him. They talk on it. It sort of just reinforces that if you already believe it. I do agree with what you're saying there, of course. Sometimes we might look too hard. I think it's probably fair to say, and our further conspiracy theories will talk about this, I don't think either partner has been faithful in their marriage. One of these sort of power couple dynamics throughout history, you've always asked, these two people are both such distinctive personalities with their own careers and their own lives and their own directions. Maybe they're forgiving of these sorts of indiscretions in the name of the greater goal, which would be Rodham Clinton dynasty, as it were. Agreed. Yeah. Number eight. This one is sort of general, and it's very early 90s. It started when she was the first lady of Arkansas, back when Bill was the governor, and it just continues in the circles where they think it might matter. This conspiracy is the conspiracy theory that Hillary Clinton is a lesbian. Um, (laughs) Whoop-de-doo. It's 2020. What sort of things should we be talking about other than this? Right, right. (laughs) Right. To substantiate this, you just can talk about the different people that have put forth this conspiracy theory. And that includes people like Jennifer Flowers, who Bill Clinton is alleged to have had relations with. But maybe that's just a smear that they want to throw out there. Not groundbreaking news in 2020. Yeah. (laughs) All right. This is funny. (laughs) I don't know why I laugh. I love conspiracy theories. This next one, number seven, I actually really believe. This is the honest truth, and we're going to get into it. But before we get into number seven, I just want to let our listeners know the point of this episode and of all of our episodes, I usually do a little disclaimer because you never know who's joined the episode because of the topic, is we don't provide the list of any topic that we cover. We just pick the worst of that best list. And number 10 doesn't mean it's the worst one. We just decide independently, and we don't know each other's picks either. We don't know what the other person is going to pick. For this list, it's going to be the one that we think is the least likely to be true. I'm still formulating my decision as we go. I want to hear your argument for these things and see hear your take before I make my call. Yes, absolutely. And those who have listened to the show since the beginning, Ruben and I have done that as well. It's perfect, Drew, that I've literally have changed Ruben's mind at the end of the show. He's made a pick and I've given my reasons for my pick. He's like, you know what? That makes more sense. And so you're allowed to change your pick before we hit the end of the recording. That is allowed. You're allowed to change your pick. This one's really interesting. 
if you remember during the Trump and Hillary uh, campaign and and then the 9-11 memorial, do you remember that 9-11 memorial where Hillary fainted? Yeah, I do. 2016 election cycle was a pretty big deal. Keeping an eye on the way that the news covered that and portraying Hillary as weak in every way that you could portray someone as weak. Did you see the video of her fainting? Have you have you seen it, though? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. It's very, it's very difficult to watch. I don't know why. But it almost looks like this is a deeper conspiracy than the one I'm – that her body looked like it shut down like a robot. <laughs> it really did. And that's not the, the conspiracy theory here, but, but her handlers almost kind of knew – that this was going to happen, they, they picked her up, they threw her in the van, and off she went. But what makes this one very interesting is proponents of this theory have placed photos from that day alongside with other photos of Clinton pointing out apparent discrepancies between the features such as her nose, cheekbones, neck, and stomach as evidence that they're two different people. A famous Hillary impersonator even tweeted that she was in New York at the same time, but later confirmed that she was actually on the West Coast. Like, that's kind of weird. I'm looking at the photos here, and they do look very different. What makes this one very interesting to me personally, where I kind of lean towards something's going on here, I know a lot of celebrities do have doubles. They do that on purpose to shake the tail of the paparazzi, to keep themselves safe, because obviously celebrities are popular, and people from the public to the paparazzi, could, or even people that want to cause harm, there are doubles for a lot of celebrities. That's actually not uncommon that celebrities do have doubles. Their job is to actually do just that, to be doubles. And these two pictures here, and you can see them here, the double versus Hillary, they do look different. And the double that came out, she came out of the apartment the same day that she fainted, if it is the double, but the individual who claimed to be Hillary, who waved to the crowd and didn't talk though, just waved and said, hey, I'm okay, looked really different than Hillary did that same day. It's just interesting. You can see that video online. This is not something you can't look at yourself. You can be your own judge. So just go to the 9-11 Memorial Fainting Day and look at the video of Hillary waving to the, everyone saying, hey, I'm okay. I, I, don't, don't worry about me. I'm healthy as a fiddle. I would almost argue if this is a truth conspiracy, so to speak, or yeah, a conspiracy just means that people are confiding in each other to hoodwink the public, that they use this double to tell everyone that the campaign's fine to vote for Hillary, that she's not sick. In the scope that you're putting it, and especially comparing it to the regular pop culture, famous person industry, I can see where this could be allowable or forgivable. If she is so famous that part of her security plan is to have a plant somewhere to maybe divert some attention, some unwanted attention to a part of town or just a different place where it wouldn't actually bother the real Hillary, then that is a risk management. It's just a part of their entire security protocol in the sense that she's a political figure and the things that she says and does are supposed to be garnering our support or lack thereof. We're supposed to be believing in this person and what they say and do. The use of a double is completely inappropriate, right? It sort of makes me think if we're going to say maybe it's allowable for security reasons or it's allowable just for that regular, she's just a very popular person and she's doing things that popular people do. That's one thing. But from a political standpoint, she has to be her. We're supporting her. We're not supporting a double or a robot or someone that has planned to sort of say the things that she might say. There's got to be a line there. Uh, Are you trying to tell me that the government doesn't tell us the truth? I think we're trying to dance. I think we're dancing on this line during this podcast. I think it's very important that we do that. (laughs) I'm going to say it. (laughs) Don't put words in my mouth. (laughs) Don't worry about it. I'm not going to do that to you. But I will say, Ryan, this is just Ryan talking. This is the opinions of Ryan right now. I don't think we're always told the whole story. And maybe there's a reason for that. I don't know what those reasons are, but I don't think we're told the whole story. You got number six ready to go? Number six is... Hillary Clinton as an unhealthy person, the conspiracy theory that is just basically around the fainting incident and other concerns about her health, that she is, well, part and parcel with being a woman. She is just too frail to handle the duties that she may eventually be elected to or that she's even been appointed to. So this is just a conspiracy theory around her health, things like the concussion that she had in the early 2010s, delayed her testimony about the Benghazi hearings. There was some talk about whether or not that was a real concussion or not, and if it was a real concussion, well, how serious is that for her in the future? 
speaking as a person who has had a actual concussion that doesn't preclude you from doing something better with your life down the road, right? There's also some leaked emails that lead to the fact that she may have taken a certain drug. The drug is called Provigil. Provigil is a drug that is used to treat Parkinson's disease, but it's not used to treat the part of Parkinson's disease that you're thinking about. It's just generally used to treat fatigue. And other people like Barack Obama have used this drug when they're in sort of this go, 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 either campaigning or um, doing the duties that they are elected to do. Yeah, the fact that she took this drug, the fact that she is the only presidential candidate in history to release her medical records, just coming from where I come from and sort of knowing what I know, you release your medical records, there's a lot of scrutiny that can be opened up. Maybe the conspiracy theory is true that she's unhealthy. Well, we do know that President Trump is the healthiest president to ever to have ever lived and run for president. Also a very stable genius. Yes, because I wish I had Trump's doctor. <laughs> a, a very scrupulous doctor. Let's no kidding. Say. Number five. With Hillary ultimately facing off against Donald Trump in 2016, indisputably the most unconventional nominee in history and a magnet of conspiracy theories himself, it was almost inevitable that the two would star opposite each other in a shared conspiracy, namely the theory that Trump himself was a Clinton plant. This theory doesn't require as much stretching of the imagination as many of the others that we've talked about. Quite simply, conspiracy theorists on the left and right have pointed to the long, friendly, and publicly established relationship between the Trumps and the Clintons. They attended his wedding. He donated to their foundation. And they were clearly friends long before they became quote-unquote enemies. The main piece of evidence cited in support of this theory is a phone call from Bill Clinton to Donald Trump that took place about a month before he entered the campaign. According to the Washington Post, for Trump... And one Clinton associate confirmed that Bill used the call to encourage Donald to get more involved in the GOP. Theorists claim that Clinton's outright asked him to run a campaign so bad it would destroy the Republican Party. Obviously, the most entertaining part of this theory is that the plan failed, keeping Hillary from her dream job and forcing Donald to do one of the hardest jobs in the world. I think there is some truth to this. Sometimes politics and government... And all that we see the world as a stage, right? I wouldn't be surprised that there's something like this could happen that, look, there's betting in sports, right? There's insider trading. These things happen. I don't think the government itself and those who run for president are immune to this kind of behavior where they, hey, you want to pat my back? I'll pat yours. And I don't think there was anyone who thought that Trump, with the way he was and the way he ran his campaign, and it was a horribly run campaign, but I think the irony was is that because it was so crazy, people just thought it was fun and they wanted to see what Donald would do in the job. I think the plan backfired, if this is true. I'm going to keep this within the realm of what you're playing with, which is it's all storylines, mm. and it's all a, a very big narrative of the very big picture. If you do that, then you sort of don't feel so offended maybe that you happen to live during the part of the story that was kind of wonky. I have never really thought that all politicians were all that different. When you talk about a guy who was considered for a very long time to be a Democrat suddenly running for president as a Republican, and you look back and you see sort of who his previous contacts were, and the people that he is wrapped up with, friends of friends, the Clintons wind up within those circles. This one does sort of seem more believable. But yeah, this one does seem, if it's all just a big story and we're just these readers or the audience, to sit back and watch these political parties collude with one another, I could buy into it. I could see it. And the irony at the end, very pleasing (laughs) from an outsider's view, right? Sure irony at the end it's just like this is a great story they wrote a great ending it didn't all work out the way they planned (laughs) i remember when again this is just me as a canadian looking down south watching this uh unravel and i remember the day of the election it was going to be almost a boring election night because we all knew that hillary was going to win it was going to be a landslide that and trump already had his well i didn't really want to win i just it just goes to show that anyone could be president if i can be second place like that type of dialogue would have happened i think honestly trump was surprised as we were sure sure 
cut my reaction out because I don't really know what to say to that. No, it's fine. There's nothing really to say. You don't. Have, you don't have to. And I actually remember feeling the day of the election, kind of like, oh, this is going to be boring. Just watching Hillary win by a landslide. And when I saw Trump winning unexpectedly in all these other uh, um, areas, what do you call it? Um, Electoral College. Thank you. State- yeah. Yeah. So when he was winning where he was supposed to win with the ratio that he was supposed to win, I was uh, like, oh, my goodness, he, he's going to become president. And I had a good chuckle. I had a good chuckle. And I don't mean that in a, in a uh, point to my fingers and laughing or even watching the world burn type behavior, but just the world is a uh, parody. It just said, of course, he's president. That's the timeline we're on. And if you believe in parallel universes, which is another uh, another episode, a top 10 parallel universe theories, we'll get to that maybe one day. All right. Ooh. Yeah. I think I do agree with you that the initial shock and the initial reaction was, well, if nothing else, right. things are going to be very different today. Right. So to people that look forward to very different things, yes, there was some excitement on that day. Right. Yep. To get to number four. Now, I sort of consider number four to be sort of an extension of number three, and here's why. It is a longer drawn out plan than what you had talked about. Okay. So you had talked about in number five was Clintons were conspiring with Trump to get him to run so that the Democratic nominee, Hillary Clinton, would win that election. Okay. So that would be like a one election cycle conspiracy theory to just secure the bid and, and you know whether or not she got a second term, that would be different. What we have here in number four is an actual conspiracy theory that involves impeachment. So this would be a conspiracy that was actually, there is no ironic twist there at the election. They intended on Trump to get elected, and they intended on him to be in office and actually then do something like he eventually did that would lead to him getting impeached. Now, this plan would be not just to harm the Republican Party in the short term to cost them the 2016 election, but it would actually sort of destroy the Republican Party due to the divisiveness around the impeachment and being unable to recover from having such a bad president who had been put into office essentially by the Clintons. So that is this conspiracy theory that they just sort of laid the seeds for President Trump to eventually screw up, and his screw up would then screw up the entire Republican Party for a very long time, causing some easy layups for Democratic candidates in the next several elections. And this one didn't work out either, if it's a true theory. I think a lot of us have been a little bit surprised, or maybe we shouldn't have been surprised, at uh, Solidarity. Party solidarity here in America is, uh, well, it is what it is in 2020. Well, yeah, Romney got himself in some hot water by not doing that. He did. A lot of lifelong Republicans who voted for him as recently as 2012 now want him out. It's unfortunate. Yeah. These theories all can't be true. So that was an example of one kind of canceling out the other one. So they both can't be true. Right, right. If four is true, then three wasn't and vice versa. Yeah. Five and four, you mean? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. So number three, <laughs> this is I, I, I'm sorry, I got the lucky ones. I, I randomly chose who's going to do even, who's going to do odd. But the Clinton body count, <laughs> sorry. The theory kicks off with the aforementioned Vince Foster, one of Hillary's supposed non-lesbian lovers, who was found dead in a park with a gunshot wound to the head in 1993. Proponents of the Clinton body count theory claim that this was not a suicide, but a murder, either to cover up the affair or to prevent Foster from implicating the new first couple in any crimes. The subsequent decades are filled with over 50 names of apparent victims of this scheme, ranging from political allies who couldn't be trusted to reporters who knew too much. Such as the next major death was that of Seth Rich, a DNC staffer who was shot during an attempted robbery in 2016. Julian Assange hinted that Rich was behind the WikiLeaks DNC email leaks and that he was taken out as punishment. And you might remember Sean Hannity pushing this theory until his advisors forced him to stop at the request of the Rich family. Rudy Giuliani also floated the theory, but said the family being in some degree of pain is no reason to stop. Finally, the theory has been linked, of course, to Jeff Epstein, the billionaire pedophile that committed suicide in prison in August of 2019. With Epstein being a known child trafficker and elite socialite, it's not hard to believe that he would have some dirt on some very powerful people. And he is known to have socialized with Bill. 
A number of coincidences, such as the guards not doing their rounds when the suicide occurred, conflicting autopsies, and the security tape being accidentally deleted have led to further speculation that Epstein's suicide was just another fake staged by the Clintons. And we actually did an episode on Epstein that people, if you want to listen to that, go back and listen to that. That was a good episode. Here's the thing, like, and I'll say this about this conspiracy theory. It's heavy. It's dark. What we do have is people are dead. So that is not a theory. We do have a body count. If you go online, you can read this body count that are in some way these people have been connected to Clintons. Is that normal to have a lot of dead bodies around politicians at, before the age of 70? I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that either. Honestly, I felt this was going back to the very first time that I knew about the Clintons as a duo, not just President Clinton, this was probably what I thought would be the number one Hillary Clinton conspiracy theory. Knowing what I know about Whitewater, knowing what you know about this Vince Foster suicide and other things that have been made to look like suicides. And most recently, Jeffrey Epstein, obviously. I wasn't on your podcast, but it's one of these things that the connection is just there. The stuff with the guards is just too much to ignore. There was some gross, gross, gross negligence, or it wasn't a suicide. If you look at that too many times, and the Clintons have just been embroiled in this apparently 50 times, the connection is there. You can like imagine a motive in this day and age where sort of image maybe you could you could justify the ends justify the means on this, taking this person out in order to preserve your image. That sounds like something that might happen. And this has been out there for 30 years now, the theory that the Clintons have sort of covered this stuff up. <laughs> Powerful people can do things that you and I can't do. Yep. Yeah, I can arrange to have somebody killed, but I'm going to jail for it. <laughs> you may not be able to afford the legal team and the appropriate accommodations to uh, get sort of house arrest and then have it pushed off for years and years and years and get yourself a nice quiet settlement later at the end of the day, right? Well, that's the thing about powerful people when you have money and power. Let's say I wanted to have you off, right? Now, and I wouldn't I, blame you. Yeah, of course. The moment I try to contact or search for a hitman, the connection is old to me. Like, I wouldn't even know who to talk to. So I would have to literally go on the internet. It's maybe the dark web, I guess. I don't even know how to log into the dark web. I would be very ill-equipped to, A, get the job done covertly, and B, even if I somehow found someone that was willing to kill you, there'd be a paper trail electronically or text. Like, I, it would be too easy to go back to me. And when you're so powerful, though, you could have 20 different separations between you and the deed. And that's why it's sort of, you get somebody in your office, they say they've got a guy for that, that guy's got a guy for that, that guy's got a guy for that. It just all trickles down. It, the payment will be arranged and the people will be spoken to and hands will be clean at the time. Yeah, let's say the guys that killed Epstein, let's say it was a murder. Let's say a guy went in there and literally, as per the, opto the autopsy actually indicated that he was murdered. So if you went in there and strangled him, you know, even if that guy got caught red-handed, he's like, yeah, I just didn't like him. Because he knows he can't say anything about the Clintons because his family will be killed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You ready for number two? Yeah, let's get to number two. The uh, number two conspiracy theory about Hillary Clinton has a lot to do with her number one aide. This would be the woman named Huma Abedin. She was the wife of Anthony Weiner, a Democratic politician. He was involved in a lot of his own scandals. But his wife, Huma was Hillary Clinton's number one age. She was the right-hand woman. Now, the allegations or the conspiracies surrounding Huma, they have to do with, one, that perhaps Hillary Clinton was in a ongoing lesbian relationship with her right-hand woman. This is just the ongoing allegations that Hillary is sleeping with women, as if that particularly matters. People like Rush Limbaugh, the conservative radio host, who I guess recently got the Medal of Honor, if you still believe in those things, <laughs> he likes to point out that Huma Abedin's mother is friends with the widow of the president of Egypt, or the then president of Egypt. And this woman, who the mother was friends with, is a well-known affiliate of the Muslim Brotherhood. There's sort of a connection there. And, of course, if you just sort of tug on those strings, you wind up with Rush Limbaugh alleging that Hillary Clinton's favorite aide is a Muslim terrorist. She's part of the sisterhood. And then, you know, the extension gets made is Hillary Clinton a part of the Muslim sisterhood, which to a lot of people just 
ask, is Hillary Clinton a terrorist or something? So that would be the connection there. Now, all of the hilarious things that can be said about Anthony Weiner, we may have to have another podcast about that. But here, his, his wife is sort of the connective tissue with the number two uh, Hillary Clinton conspiracy theory, which is that she's part of the Muslim sisterhood. This is actually a theory that was uh, propounded by Trump supporter Michelle Bachman in 2016. And I can't believe that I forgot to mention that because Michelle Bachman is one of my favorite hilarious politicians. Yeah, and she's also the daughter of uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive. I'll believe it if you say it. No. <laughs> That's a very interesting one. One I actually haven't heard before. No, I don't think I really did either. I don't listen to a lot of Rush Limbaugh. May he re- soon rest in peace. Okay, number one. <laughs> Perhaps the most memorable conspiracy moment in Hillary's life is one that turned out to be true. The infamous, quote, vast right-wing conspiracy that Bill was having an affair with a White House intern. So ever since that scandal came to light, Hillary has been roundly criticized for her attempts to discredit the woman making accusations against her husband. But according to one of Bill's former advisors, it didn't stop there. Throughout multiple books and interviews, Dick Morris makes reference to what he calls the secret police claiming, quote, Hillary built up a secret police for the purposes of conducting a systematic campaign to intimidate, frighten, threaten, discredit, and punish innocent Americans whose only misdeed is their desire to tell the truth, end quote. The secret police force was apparently made up of private investigators, opposition researchers, and operatives embedded in a number of key agencies, such as the FBI, CIA, and IRS. Their job was to find compromising material on any Clinton critics so they could be silenced before dealing any reputational damage to the political power couple. But once again, if this theory turns out to be true, it looks like it didn't work out. The secret police are going to be after our podcast next. (laughs) I knew that we shouldn't be talking about these types of subjects, Ryan. We're just reporting. We're just reporting. In fact, we're actually helping out the Clintons because we are actually going to give our pick what is the least likely to be true. So we're actually helping them determine, you know, of these 10, there's one that's probably the least true. So we're actually trying to we're actually discrediting at least one of these. I can imagine that there are probably three, if not four, very well-paid people that are listening to our podcast just looking for any mention of Hillary Clinton and how that might affect her future endeavors, right? Yeah, my influence and this show's influence is so vast, they should be fearful of what people might think. There are many well-paid people keeping an eye on you and you specifically, right? Oh. <laughs> I, I completely agree with you. This one is not only proven to be true, but it also seems, uh, is it a conspiracy theory to say that very powerful people have private investigators working on their behalf? Uh, these things don't shock me or surprise me. That It's an extension of her security, the management of logistics of her being able to do what she needs to do. She needs to have investigators working for her. The whole concept of that third category of plants within certain government agencies, I don't know. Maybe maybe that could just be people that are friendly with her and now they're going to be referred to as plants that or close associates. People that would give her a heads up if something seemed to be sensitive to her. As a conspiracy theory, it just seems anybody that would ever reach the level of a Hillary Clinton or the level of a duo like the Clintons, they would have these sorts of people working on their behalf and be part of their team. You ready? Are you ready to pick which one you think is the least likely to be an actual truth? Yeah, yeah. You mind if I run down the 10 again real quick? Of course. Okay. And number 10 was the Monica Lewinsky scandal was all Hillary's idea. Number nine was Chelsea Clinton is not Bill Clinton's daughter. Number eight was Hillary is a lesbian. Number seven is Hillary is a uh, body double or clone of some sort. No, no, she has a double. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There is still a real Hillary Clinton out there, but there's also a double. Of right. Her. Yes. Number six is that Hillary is too unhealthy to take any of the offices that she aspires to. Number five is that Donald Trump was a plant who was secretly working with the Clinton family or the Democratic Party. Number four is an extension of that idea, which indicates that Donald Trump is a plant that is not just meant to ensure one election for the Democrats, but is meant to ensure many elections down the road by getting impeached and destroying the Republican Party. Number three is the Clinton body count. Number two is 
the Hillary Clinton, Huma Abedin, Sinister Sisters, Muslim terrorist conspiracy theory. And number one is Hillary Clinton's secret police. Now, out of those, the one that I spoke about most recently, the thought that Hillary Clinton is a Muslim terrorist, to me, that is the least believable of these conspiracy theories. Okay. That's uh, not a bad pick. I'll allow it. That's not bad at all. I, I'm i torn because there was the two that contradicted each other. The Clinton plant, so that Trump himself was a plant to give her the victory, vice Trump winning the election so he could be impeached so Hillary could. What was the reason for him being impeached? The reason that he was impeached in reality was that he arranged a quid pro quo with the president of Ukraine. Uh, He asked the president of Ukraine to investigate his political rival or specifically his political rival's son and his business dealings in Ukraine. And in exchange for that, President Trump would not only give him the international aid that was allotted by the Congress and paid for by the United States taxpayers, which Trump was obligated to give him anyways, but he would also arrange a White House visit with the Ukrainian president. So those two things in exchange for uh, an investigation into a political rival. Okay, sir, I asked the question wrong. My apologies. I, you, thank you for answering that. That's fine. That was what Trump. That was the Trump impeachment that we just had. But the Clintons wanted Trump to be impeached because this would cause an identity crisis for the GOP and move it more towards the center, giving Democrats an easy ride for a few years. That was their goal if he was to be impeached, had this been a conspiracy. So those two contradict each other. So I believe one of them is definitely the least likely. And I think the least likely one is the impeachment plan. I think to have him in office, just to see him impeached, I think is the most, that's too, that's too risky to have him in office because he could just swerve anyways. I don't think he's somebody that you should rely on. And I, I think the Clintons would know that, that Trump's probably not someone he should have a quarterback in your team. I think I agree with you in that that would have been such a stretch to believe you can control all of the things, especially knowing going into 2016 that the Republicans controlled the Senate, uh, that it was going to be difficult to wrestle that from them, and that they would be the ones ultimately in control of impeachment. To me, honestly, that conspiracy theory just does not make sense given what we knew in 2016 about the political climate. Exactly. So there you go. Number four, the impeachment plan. That's the least likely in my books. So that is the worst of the best of these uh, conspiracy theories of Hillary Clinton. And quite frankly, I think the rest could very well be true. (laughs) (laughs) And several of them, who cares? Yeah, 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 if she's a lesbian, I don't care. So remember, everyone, in front of every silver lining, there is a cloud. And we're here to help you find it. Thank you, Drew. Thank you for coming on and uh, filling in and being a guest host on this episode. I hope to have you on again someday. It was absolutely my pleasure. And if we ever get the chance to talk about any of these wacky topics, I'm your man. Awesome. All right, brother. Have a good night. Take care.